Yeah, yeah, you are audible. You can start. Okay. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the second day of the international webinar series, Biospectrum 2021, on the recent trends in biological sciences, organized by the Postgraduate and Research Department of Microbiology, Sri Shankara College, Kalari. Today, we are having the technical session two, led by Dr. Venkata Nagashri Khan Gadikapati, Assistant Professor, Cardiovascular Genomics Lab, College of Medicine, The Ohio State University, Columbus, Ohio. And the topic of today's session is decoding the complexity of non-coding genome in cardiovascular diseases. Dr. Srikanth has completed his bachelor's degree in biochemistry, biotechnology and chemistry from the Osmania University, Hyderabad, and his master's from North Maharashtra University. And he acquired his PhD in biotechnology from Sanjay Gandhi, Postgraduate Institute of Medical Sciences, Lucknow. Currently, he's working as an assistant professor, Department of Emergency Medicine, Dorothy M. Davis Heart and Lung Research Institute, Ohio State University at Columbus. Before we begin, I request all the participants to mute your microphones and turn off your video for the smooth conduct of the session. And I would like to invite Dr. R. Manjula, Associate Professor, Postgraduate and Research Department of Microbiology to deliver the welcome speech. Madam, please. Am I audible? Yes, ma'am. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. A warm welcome to all of you. It's my privilege to introduce our distinguished speaker, Dr. Venkata Naga Srikanth Garikpati. Uh, he has completed his BSc from Osmania University and received his MSc in Biotechnology from North Maharashtra University, Jalgaon. He completed his PhD in biotechnology from Sanjay Gandhi Postgraduate Institute of Medical Sciences, Lucknow. And he has several awards to his credit, including Faculty Incentive Award instituted by the Temple University in 2019, Career Development Award in 2018, and Research Excellence Award in, both in 2015 and 2019, instituted by the American Heart Association. He was awarded the postdoctoral fellowship by American Heart Association in 2015. He has worked as a postdoctoral fellow in Feinberg Cardiovascular Research Institute, Northwestern University, Chicago. He was a visiting research scholar, a postdoctoral fellow, and a postdoctoral research associate at the Center of Translational Medicine, Temple University, Philadelphia. At present, he is the assistant professor in the Department of Emergency Medicine, Dorothy M. Davis Heart and Lung Research Institute, Ohio State University at Columbus. He has several publications in reputed journals to his credit. He will be enlightening us on the topic, decoding the complexity of non-coding genome in cardiovascular disease. On behalf of Sri Shankara College, the Microbiology Department of Sri Shankara College, and my own personal behalf, I, I extend a warm welcome to you, sir. I would also like to welcome my colleagues, students, delegates from other colleges who are here to attend this webinar. Wishing you a happy learning time and fruitful interactive session. Have a nice day. Thank you. Thank you, madam. Now, Dr. Shrikan, the dice is all yours. Yeah, uh, thank you for your kind introduction. Okay. 
So are you able to see it? Yes, sir. So this is a full screen, right? You know, uh, this Microsoft Teams is new to me. We we use Zoom here. It's all good, right? I, I can go ahead, right? Yes, sir. Yeah, now it oh. is perfect. Sorry, Dr. Mohan? Now it is perfect. Okay, awesome. Okay. okay. So thank you for the invite, uh, Dr. Mohan and uh, Dr. Manjula for uh, you know, a kind introduction. Um, so my lab is uh, majorly looking into the non-coding genome uh, in terms of cardiovascular disease. So, so this is a major focus of our lab. As you look at this you know, bar graph in, in towards your left, uh, cardiovascular is a major cause of uh, mortality and morbidity all over the world. So we are trying to uh, uh, understand uh, novel mechanisms and novel therapeutics. Uh, again, in terms of cardiovascular disease, we are specifically looking into myocardial infarction, uh, which is also called as uh, heart attack. So we are developing novel therapeutics in terms of non-coding genome and also uh, uh, developing new therapeutics for the diabetic cardiomyopathy. And uh, we are doing some space research as well. So we have, uh, I'm collaborating uh, with David Gaukasian in Mount Sinai. Uh, and we are looking at the uh, plasma of the astronauts who went to the space station and uh, we are exploring different non-coding genome in the uh, astronauts plasma samples so that we can use them as uh, surrogate biomarkers because astronauts are subjected to different kinds of stressors like microgravity and radiation and they're prone to uh, cardiovascular diseases and cancers. So we are trying to understand, can we detect any early biomarkers so that we can predict uh, cardiovascular disease or cancers? And uh, we're also interested in stem cell derived secretory factors and their content in terms of non-coding genome. So this is all what about uh, is about my lab and our research. So. Uh, in any case, and if you are interested to learn more about uh, what we are doing in detail, uh, feel free to email me, you know, or we can get in touch. I will give my email, I mean, uh, Dr. Mohan, feel free to email, I mean, email or email. Me. So, yeah, so before getting into uh, our research, I wanted to quickly emphasize if you look at this cartoon, you know, this is human genome, only 2% of it encodes for proteins. So for a long period of time, people thought, you know, there's a lot of <coughs> junk DNA sitting there and, and it doesn't have any function. So, but, uh, you know, thanks to the novel technologies, uh, again, in terms of RNA sequencing and stuff, so we now know that there's a lot of DNA molecules. If you if you look at the I mean, central dogma of molecular biology, DNA is transcribed to RNA and RNA is translated into a protein. So, so we always thought that only 2%, I mean, we know that only 2% of it codes for proteins, the rest of it was thought to be junk. And uh, now we know that there are different kinds of uh, non-coding genome there. And uh, we don't know the function of many of these kinds of uh, non-coding RNA. So when I'm saying non-coding RNA, DNA is transcribed to RNA and RNA is not translated to protein. So, so what are those transcribed RNA doing is, uh, you know, uh, million dollar question there. So for the past decade or so, you know, uh, people have been actually looking at different aspects and different kinds of uh, uh, non-coding RNAs. So these non-coding RNAs can be, you know, categorized into small and long based on their uh, size. So if it is anything less than 200 nucleotides, that they are classified as small uh, non-coding RNAs. And if they're anything larger than 200 nucleotides, they're called as long non-coding RNAs. So, so we have been, uh, you know, we identified a novel uh, RNA species called circular RNAs in the cardiovascular system in the heart after heart attacks. And our lab is majorly working on this 
particular RNA species, you know. So just to emphasize, uh, you know, these circular RNAs by their name, uh, they are circular in nature. The rest, all the RNAs you see in the human body are linear, li linear in nature. Uh, these are the only pecu peculiar uh, RNA species which are circular in nature. So, and we are, we also look into microRNAs and their role uh, in cardiovascular disease. As you look at this cartoon, this is a busy cartoon. What I'm trying to say is, uh, uh, it is increasingly clear that I mean this transcribed RNA has a regulatory role. So, and circular RNAs were identified. They were discovered for the first time. Uh, in 2013 by Rajaski's group in um, Germany. So I'll talk more about my work and I'll give a brief uh, background about what circular RNAs are and uh, you know, jump into our work, what we have uh, published and what we are doing right now. So if you look at this cartoon, uh, circular RNAs are circularized RNA loops so unlike mRNA, uh, they lack poly A tail and pi prime capping, and uh, they can be transcribed from either from exon or intron alone, or a combination of both exon and intron DNA. So they're mostly found in the cytoplasm because um, intronic I mean intronic circles are are present, but they're rare. So if there's a intronic circle, debranching enzymes degrade them. So, so most of these circles come from the exonic regions. So they're more stable and they're found most in the cytoplasm. And they're stable in the cells when I'm saying stable, uh, because you know, if you look at this uh, linear RNA, this three prime to five prime end is accessible. And, and in the human body, we have a lot of exonucleases in the system and they can cleave non-specifically all the uh, linear RNAs, but uh, circular RNAs due to their you know, circular nature, exonucleases do not have access to cleave them, so they're more stable. So for example, if an mRNA has uh, uh, 10 hours of half-life, uh, circular RNA would have three to four times more of um, half-life compared to the normal linear RNA. So that's how they are more stable in the system and they could be a good prognostic and bi biomarkers uh, for detecting a disease. And they're well conserved between species because uh, most of these circles, uh, circular RNAs come from the exonic re regions, pr protein coding regions. So th uh, therefore they're conserved between the species. So, so this slide talks about um, how are they synthesized, uh, you know, in the body. So, so over the past uh, seven, uh, eight years, people have put forward a uh, few mechanisms how they can, uh, how they can form. So the first one talks about the intron pairing driven circularization. So there are uh, ALU repeats, for example, in this, uh, 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 model, this intronic sequence has complementary sequences, you know, which can pay directly. So imagine there's a exon, uh, exonic region. Did this? Sorry. So yeah. So this blue uh, color bar, you know, this blocks are the exons and the white you know these black lines are the uh, introns so this complementary sequences helps in the circularization of the rna so they bring the rna into the closed moiety and they help in the circularization of the rna likewise rna binding proteins also bring these complementary sequences into close proximity and uh, they can help in our circular rna uh, biogenesis and also lariates also can uh, drive circular rna formation and again, there could be a combination of exon and intron here, and mostly they are exonic circular RNAs. So, mode of action. So, so there are three different kinds of uh, mode of action. Uh, you know, uh, people have um, identified. So, 
One is uh, these circles have binding sites for the microRNAs. So what they do is it's you know, imagine a sponge, you know, and you have water. Uh, you know, uh, so this sponge will you know suck up all the water just like that. Circular RNAs have binding sites for the microRNAs and RNA binding proteins. So they can be used as a molecular sponges. They can just, you know, uh, hold them back. You know, they, they can tightly bind to them and hold them back. And there's one classical example um, where they can interact with the RNA pol 2 and, uh, and transcribe, uh, you know, uh, helps in the transcription of a gene. Uh, but this is only one example, but most of these circles act as uh, either microRNA sponges or RNA binding protein sponges. and uh, they inhibit um, their activity. So, as I mentioned, our lab is uh, majorly in, uh, you know, uh, focused on a specific disease model. So we have mouse models of these disease, and uh, as you know, myocardial infarction is uh, it's uh, one of the leading causes of death, you know, all over the world. So, so you know this. Uh, this image show, shows that you know, uh, there is uh, occlusion of this LAD. So, so generally uh, the, you have, I mean, if a person has a ischemic event, myocardial infarction, uh, there's an occlusion of this artery called LAD. LAD is left anterior descending coron coronary artery. So when there's occlusion in this artery, uh, the left ventricle of this heart is uh, you know, dead. So that is why it is called as infarction. Infarction is a dead portion. So imagine, you know, you, you know, your heart is supposed to beat this way, and due to this, uh, you know, occlusion of your occlusion of the artery, heart function is compromised. So if it has to beat this way, it will beat slowly. So, so heart is an important or organ, you know, which pumps, you know, uh, blood to the, you know, all parts of the body. So this, if the left ventricular uh, function is compromised. It cannot pump blood sufficiently to the other organs of the body, and it would lead to you know other complications. So, uh, so I always look at this way. You now, imagine you uh, know you have a wound you know on your skin, and um, so you have a scar formation after uh, you know two I mean few days. So same thing happens with the heart. Since heart is a you know contractile organ. It, I mean, we don't need, I don't, we don't want a scar formation on the heart. If the scar formation is formed, pump function is compromised. So, so we are trying to understand, you know, first thing is there's a humongous loss of cardiomyocytes. Cardiomyocytes are the functional cells which are important for the beating uh, function of the heart. So when there's the occlusion of this artery, uh, you know, there is, uh, there's a humongous loss of cardiomyocytes. Uh, they just die off. So imagine you know you have you know in a house these bricks are gone you know they're, they're, the whole house will collapse just like that heart uh, when there is a occlusion of an ar artery LED in the heart so there will be cardiac rupture basically so so to prevent this uh, fibroblasts come into play and they build up the wall again but we need to have a wall with cardiomyocytes not with the fibroblasts fibroblasts are the you know they give structure but they cannot beat uh, just like cardiomyocytes so our lab is looking into you know uh, to understand whether we can regenerate the dead tissue uh, using uh, non coding genome modulators and also at the same time can we protect uh, cardiomyocytes uh, dying cardiomyocytes that's one more one more thing we are looking into so so we use mouse models of this disease, uh, and we also uh, collaborate with uh, physicians for the plasma samples uh, from these um, uh, patients with MI. So for the mouse models of heart disease, we like it. Again, animals would not have MI, and they don't get MI in their lifetime. So we uh, do an open chest surgery, just like you know in humans. Uh, you know, uh, we put the animals on the ventilator open the chest and ligate LED on them and and suture them back and uh, you know let the animals survive for uh, uh, two to three months so that we can test our therapies so that that uh, that is our major uh, model we use in the lab 
so getting into the circular RNA thing, so 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 we started. We asked a simple question. You know, uh, when we started this work in 2016. Uh, we didn't had any information. I mean, there was no publications in this area, so uh, we did, we had no clue how circular RNA signature looks like in the heart post MI. When I'm saying MI, it is heart attack. So, so we have two groups here. You know, we have either uh, sham sham surgeries. We open the chest and close it. We don't like it, the heart to induce disease. And MI hearts are the heart attacks. We we like it the artery and um, suture it back. So we have a control without heart attack and with heart attack. So we are comparing these two groups to see what, what is the transcriptional uh, changes in terms of circular RNAs at day three after heart attack. So, so we performed a circular RNA microarray and uh, we identified that uh, 242 transcripts were differentially expressed. 242 circular RNAs were differentially expressed. And as you see this pie chart, most of these circles are coming from the axonic regions, this, this blue color, uh, this, they're coming from the axonic regions, either they're upregulated or downregulated. So when I'm saying upregulated or downregulated, it is compared to the sham group. So as I mentioned, we are comparing sham and heart attack group. Sham is a control and MI is a heart attack group. So co compared to the control, uh, you know, there are 242 transcripts which are either upregulated or downregulated. So, so now we started exploring uh, uh, downregulated circles. You know, when we started, we didn't had a good uh, knockdown strategy. Uh, so we looked at only downregulated circles. You know, at that point, and this is the heat map. How it looks like. You know, there are. So we have sham. I mean, non. Uh, surgery group. I mean, there's no MI here. There's no heart attack and these are heart attack mouse hearts. So we performed a circular RNA uh, expression profiling and uh, these are the heat maps, how it looks like. And uh, red represents, you know, high expression and blue represents low expression. So we started, uh, you know, validating them uh, and uh, we found that this uh, circle coming from the circular RNA FNAC3B uh, is significantly downregulated at uh, you know, at different time points post MI. So we found this circular FNDC to be downregulated in in the in our in the microarray data. So we validated that at different time points post MI. So so FNDC 3B uh, is a gene basically. So imagine uh, you have you know think about any in any of your favorite genes, and um, so just like splice variants for a gene circles can form form from any kind of you know any number of exons and uh, so this circle is coming from second and third exon of the fnt dc3b uh, cognate gene so to make it simpler actually imagine you know um, you have a gene x which has uh, 10 exons and definitely every exon every gene has introns which are spliced off so this uh, circular RNA is coming from this cognate gene called FNDC3B and uh, coming from second and third exon of the uh, th um, this FNDC3B gene. So there could be multiple circular RNAs coming from different other exons, but in our microarray data, we found only uh, FNDC3B coming from this second and third exons of this uh, cognate gene. So we validated, as you see this, uh, we validated by qPCR uh, and we have primer specific for this um, junction actually. So, so we enrich circles by treating the, you know, we isolate RNA from the whole tissue. We treat the samples with RNSR. RNSR has a three prime to five prime exonuclease activity. So once you incubate your RNA with this RNSR, it would non-specifically cleave all the linear RNA and your circles are enriched there. So when the circular RNAs are enriched, we use uh, primers specific to the junction to amplify the junction, and um, and that's how we confirm it. And we also confirm it by Sanger sequencing later on. So and the cognate gene was it had no effects actually. You know, uh, only the circular RNA levels are going down. Cognate gene levels were unchanged. So 
this was a good target for us because so we screened multiple i mean i didn't i mean due to time constraint i'm not showing a lot of screening uh, you know analysis how we came on to this particular one target so we have screened hundreds of circles and uh, we you know we found this uh, target to be uh, consistently down regulated so we wanted to pursue further to see whether it has any physiological role if we you know uh, since it is down regulated we are trying to rescue its function and see whether it has a functional role so so we did one experiment you know we i always think that you know we we need to validate mouse uh, you know uh, data in the humans uh, to take things forward so our lab is mostly into discovery you know we we uh, we identify novel circular i mean rna species and um, uh, we want to understand whether it makes uh, any sense in terms of human disease so if it is only in the mouse hearts we, we are not uh, very much excited about it uh, we always look at the human uh, sequences and uh, human data if we see uh, the the particular target has a role in human disease that's when we move forward with it so that's what we did here you know uh, in the left you see we did uh, we did a uh, pairwise alignment to see uh, our mouse sequence has any homology with the with the human sequence and uh, interestingly we found more than 85% of this sequence has homology with the mouse sequence so i think uh, yeah So are you able to see me? I mean, uh, yes, yes, yes. Oh, okay, see. great. Okay. So, so, yeah, in the human hearts, you know, we we got uh, these human hearts uh, from our collaborator Stephen Hauser. Uh, where we had non-failing hearts and ischemic cardiomyopathy hearts, so we thought these would be the perfect uh, samples for us. So we had we had uh, heart tissues from them. We again isolated RNA and uh, treated RNA with the RNAs R to deplete all the linear RNA, and uh, we amply you know we looked at only uh, circular FNDC 3B, and uh, you know very interestingly we found it is significantly downregulated. Uh, you know this red bar show in the ischemic cardiomyopathy hearts it is down regulated so this says that in the mouse uh, in our mouse pathology and the human pathology with uh, cardiovascular disease this circular rna expression is going down so that was a, a good uh, you know um, start for us so so we thought you know this circle uh, circular rna levels are down regulated now uh, can we rescue those uh, levels and can we improve you know heart function was the major goal so we looked, uh, we looked into the data like you know uh, we were uh, uh, while screening these circles we were unbiased uh, because uh, we want to see uh, come up with a target which is you know significantly down regulated consistently down regulated so we were not sure where this circle uh, is coming from so so ideally this circle would have MMU circ 008396 nomenclature. So when we look into the genome, uh, we found that it, you know, it comes from the second and third uh, axons of this uh, uh, FNDC3B cognate gene on the chromosome three. So, so since we had no information about this circle because this is uh, nobody has looked into uh, the role of uh, this circle in any kind of disease. So we were not sure like what it does. So, but based on its cognate gene, we predicted its function. So, cognate gene FNDC3B. I mean, its mRNA has a role in cancers. It is generally elevated in the cancers, uh, in different kinds of cancers, and it is involved in uh, uh, cell survival pathways. So, in cancer, cell cell survival is important for the cancer progression and stuff. So. So in the heart disease, uh, you know, uh, unlike cancers, in cancers you want to restrict the angiogenesis uh, to, you know, so that you know it does not go into the metastasis. 
in the cardiovascular disease, we want to you know activate angiogenesis because uh, your vasculature is compromised because of the occlusion of the artery. So it's it's opposite actually. In cancer, you you want to restrict uh, angiogenesis. In cardiovascular disease, you promote angiogenesis because you need more vasculature for the heart so that there is better better pump function. Um, so for that reason, we thought it would make more sense. Uh, in the heart, this this target was downregulated. It is expressed in low levels, and uh, and heart function is compromised. And we thought if rescuing of this function might enhance angiogenesis because so in the cancers when this mRNA is in, uh, levels are increased in cancers, there's more angiogenesis in the heart. Whereas in the uh, you know in the cancers. In the heart, it is downregulated and there's less angiogenesis. When we increase the levels, you know, it, uh, we we thought it would also increase the angiogenesis in the heart, and it, that's how it can improve the cardiac function. So, based on this preliminary data that you know from the uh, mouse hearts and from the human hearts, you know, we came to a conclusion that this could be a good target in both the diseases, uh, both the disease conditions, both in humans and mouse. It is. Uh, lowly expressed or down regulated so we, we moved ahead uh, you know to understand its function whether it's just down regulation or it has any you know um, clinical relevance or functional relevance so and uh, and there were no studies when we started this work as i said um, when we looked into this circle so we were more excited to see uh, what it does to the heart function so based on this uh, background, we hypothesized that a rescue of this circular RNA, <coughs> excuse me, uh, levels can protect uh, you know, um, and improve cardiac function post MI. So the whole, I mean, goal of this project is to see whether a rescue of this RNA levels, for example, levels are down. We are trying to increase the, you know, bring it back to normal, so that heart function. You know, can be it can become. I mean, it cannot become normal, but we can improve the cardiac function. Uh, was the major goal. So, so we asked the next question. Actually, you know, we isolated RNA from the whole heart. Does it has to do with any cell specific, you know, uh, expression? So, what we did was uh, because we wanted to go with a cell specific delivery. For example. Uh, the circular RNA is downloaded only in a particular cell type. We can use uh, a viral vector mediated delivery so that we can specifically deliver them to the specific cell type. And to understand the mechanisms also, what we did was we we induced heart attacks in these mouse models and isolated the hearts at day three. And we did a cell fractionation ex experiment where we separated out, we isolated cardiomyocytes endothelial cells and fibroblasts. So there are different types of cells in the heart. You know, you have cardiomyocytes are the functional units. Endothelial cells support your vasculature. Fibroblasts are, you know, are important for the structural stability. And there are other types of cells, smooth muscle cells. And you know, with the, uh, with the sterile inflammation after heart attacks, you see a lot of immune cells coming from the bone marrow. So, so there are a lot of cells uh, you know, in the heart, but we focus only on these three cell types. Um, and we found that uh, interestingly in cardiomyocytes, in, you know, look at this, uh, you know, first and the second uh, bar graph, there's a significant downregulation uh, of uh, this circular RNA, both in endothelial cells and cardiomyocytes. Uh, in the fibroblasts, you know, there's a downregulation, uh, but it, it didn't attain uh, statistical significance. So for our future experiments for mechanisms, we used the uh, endothelial cells and cardiomyocytes. So, so, so we generated a uh, overexpression vector. So, so to rescue this circular RNA expression, uh, because they were uh, expression levels were low, to increase the levels, we need a uh, system where we can deliver this um, circular RNAs, you know, there since the levels were compromised, uh, rescuing 
the levels we thought might you know help heart from you know going to heart failure. So for that reason, we in-house uh, generated a, a overexpression system. As you see this, you know this is a plasmid again. You know we incorporated. Uh, uh, you know we have this DNA repetitive elements. As you remember, you know I showed in our, in the biogenesis. DNA repetitive elements, you know, the complementary intronic sequence would help in circularization of the RNA. So just like that, we have this uh, DNA repetitive elements uh, flanking this exonic sequence uh, coming from second and third exon. So we know that this FNDC3B circular RNA is coming from second and third exons of this uh, cognate gene FNDC3B. So so Jeremy actually from University of Pennsylvania, he developed this plasmid and uh, you know he, we collaborated actively with him. And uh, we ins inserted our circular RNA sequence in there and due to this DNA repetitive element. So this plasmid generates only circles, not the linear RNA. So, So we confirmed the overexpression. What we did was we generated these plasmids, we transfected them into endothelial cells and also cardiomyocytes. So here in this case, these are uh, endothelial cells. And as you see this, uh, you know, there's a sig I mean, significant upregulation when we are transfecting endothelial cells uh, with this plasmid compared to the controls. And, uh, and these are the Sanger sequencing, uh, you know, just to confirm the junction that we are actually overexpressing the, uh, the circles. So, and uh, and interestingly, uh, we did not find any you know, overexpression of this circular RNAs had no effect on the linear RNAs. So, our target was to increase only circular RNA levels, not the linear RNA levels. Uh, no? With this experiment, it proves that we are only overexpressing the circles, not the linear RNA. It does not have any effect on the cognate gene. So that is what was achieved in this uh, particular uh, experiment. So next, uh, uh, since we don't know how it, you know, uh, it works and what are its mechanisms, so we overexpressed these plasmids into cardiac endothelial cells uh, because, as you remember, in the endothelial cells in the heart, uh, so the circular levels were downregulated. Uh, so we wanted to see overexpression. We wanted to overexpress in the cardiac endothelial cells and see what it does to the signaling. So we again did an array after overexpression of these uh, circular RNA in the endothelial cells, and we found that the bunch of you know, stuff which are differentially expressed, and uh, we validated the, this microarray data by uh, qPCR. Uh, we picked up three of these genes which were uh, which were top on our, on our list. And to our interest, you know, we found this VEGF. VEGF was significantly upregulated in the uh, endothelial cells, overexpressing this uh, circular RNA compared to the controls. So this gave us a good lead, actually. So when we are overexpressing this circle, there's increased VEGF levels. So we thought it would be a good target because, uh, you know, VEGF is important in angiogenesis. And also, it is cardioprotective, so we thought it would be great. You know, when we are overexpressing this circle, there's an increased VEGF levels in the heart, and uh, that would take care of the angiogenesis in the heart. So, so that was again a, a good, um, uh, you know, um, readout in this particular essay, and we were quite excited about that. So, we moved ahead and did some in vitro assays. So, as I mentioned, uh, this circular FNDC3B was downregulated uh, in the endothelial cells and cardiomyocytes. So we started looking into their uh, uh, functional aspects uh, in terms of endothelial cell function and cardiomyocyte function. So, we in this particular experiment on the on the top, uh, this red dots represent the tunnel positive cells and the blue represent the nuclei. So what we did was we took endothelial cells and we subjected them to hydrogen peroxide stress to induce apoptosis in these cells. And then in, a, in another arm, we overexpressed this uh, uh, circular RNA to see overexpression of this circular RNA has any effect on the apoptosis. So as you see this uh, bar graph here, 
over expression of this circular FNDC3B compared to this blue graph here, uh, there's a significant down regulation of apoptosis in the circular FNDC3B treated, uh, treated endothelial cells compared to the controls. Uh, again, this is inducing apoptosis in the endothelial cells by subjecting them to hydrogen peroxide stress. So next we asked endothelial cells, you know, are form uh, in our tubes in vitro. So we, you know, we did a in vitro angiogenesis assay where we put the endothelial cells on the matrigel and, you know, they form these beautiful tubes just like you see it here. So we wanted to see whether overexpression of this circular RNA has any effect on the um, uh, tube formation assay. And to our surprise, we found that overexpression of this circular FNDC3B significantly improved. If you look at the controls and uh, FNDC3B treated endothelial cells, there's a clear difference. And uh, these bar graphs uh, we plotted for the branch points show that there's a significant uh, increase in the tube formation ability of endothelial cells when, uh, when this circular RNA was overexpressed. So this uh, suggests that Overexpression of this circular RNA is increasing VEGF levels at that's one point, and it is also reducing endothelial cell apoptosis and also increasing angiogenesis uh, in vitro. So, so we also did the same similar kind of experiments in the cardiomyocytes. We took uh, mouse cardiomyocytes, human cardiomyocytes, rat cardiomyocytes. So different kinds of cardiomyocytes we took and overexpressed this circular RNA and subjected them to stress uh, and the uh, overexpression of this circular RNA in all the irrespective of the cell types, uh, you know, from different origins, it protected uh, cardiomyocyte uh, cell death. I'm not showing the data here because of the time constraint. Uh, we have, uh, if anybody is interested, I'll be happy to take through the data, you know, later on. And, and again, it is all published. It's all online. Uh, I can share the details. You can go back and uh, read through our paper. So, so next thing we question is, I know uh, that's great that you know when we are overexpressing this uh, circular RNA uh, in the in vitro system is working well, but you know we were more interested to see the physiology and uh, understand what's happening when we inject them into the animal hearts. So this this is more uh, you know exciting for us uh, you know so since uh, we we had uh, encouraging in vitro data so we wanted to move ahead into in vivo stuff so uh, so what we did was in this you know as you see this experimental design so we ligated the artery on the heart as I mentioned we induced heart attack in the animals because the animals would not have uh, a disease. So we ligate the artery, we do an open chest surgery, ligate the heart, and right after the after the induction of the heart attack, we injected. So AV, I mean, I, I would like to introduce to AV. So AV is an adeno-associated virus 9. So we packaged our overexpression plasmids into you know, adeno-associated virus. So adeno-associated virus has more tropism for the heart, especially the serotype 9. So, so since it has, uh, and it is uh, already tested in clinical trials, there are a lot of clinical trials going with the AAV9. So, so we use this as a vector to deliver our gene of interest, that is circular FNDC3B. So we had either control or uh, saline group or circular FNDC3B groups. So here are the viral particles we injected, number of viral particles. So we injected right after the MI, as you see here, you know, this blue, inject, I mean, green injection here. So that is a virus we are injecting uh, with the transgene circular FNDC to, to increase its expression. And we followed up the mice for eight weeks. Uh, so we injected on day zero, followed up for eight weeks with echocardiography. So echocardiography, you know, we are looking at the, you know, we put a probe just like ultrasound in the humans. We put a probe on the heart of these, uh, you know, mouse models with heart attack to see uh, what is, you uh, know, how is its function, uh, and uh, we we record this every week for eight weeks to see uh, whether there is a whether there is an effect of this uh, AAV9 uh, circular FNDC3B compared to the controls, 
and we sacrifice the mice at eight weeks and we look for the histology and other biochemical parameters. So we first confirmed, you know, uh, we wanted to see, uh, we are able to see uh, the circular RNA overexpression eight weeks post MI and uh, these two uh, first and second, uh, you know, bar graphs, it shows that overexpression of circular RNA is still, you know, we are able to still see the uh, circular RNA expression. So imagine we injected day zero and uh, we are collecting the hearts at eight weeks. So we are still able to see the overexpression at eight weeks post MI. So that means single injection of this virus uh, with this circular RNA to, in, you know, to rescue its expression or overexpress it, we still, we still see the expression. But uh, interestingly, uh, the cognate gene, wherever this circular RNA is coming from, uh, did not change. So again, uh, you know, we also prove here that in vivo also, when we are overexpressing this circle, there is no effect on the cognate gene, only that we are increasing the circular RNA levels. So uh, this is a busy slide. I mean, like, uh, so here uh, we are, uh, you know, as I mentioned, we did an echocardiography to record heart function. So as you see this, uh, you know, there's a significant improvement with time. And look at this red dots. Uh, over time, one week, two weeks, three weeks, and eight, four weeks and eight weeks, there's a significant uh, improvement in cardiac function in these animals. So, so this is a significant uh, uh, finding and also uh, important readout for us uh, because we are looking at the heart function. So this suggests that overexpression of this uh, circular RNA can improve, uh, you know, heart function of these mice um, with MI. So, so this is this was very exciting for us. Uh, you know, it was uh, three years uh, of uh, a lot of work, and we were uh, quite uh, you know uh, happy to see those uh, results. But we wanted to confirm it by um, other methods, and you know we did histology experiments, and it also corroborates with our. Uh, uh, physiology echocardiography data as you see here this is a massive trichome staining it talk i mean it stains the fibrosis in the heart as you see here in the controls there's more fibrosis and in the, with the circular RNA treatment there's a, a reduced fibrosis there and as you can see it in the quantification on your right uh, and also uh, we looked at the capillary since you know uh, in, in the in vitro experiments we found uh, overexpression of this circular FNDC 3B increases VEGF levels and also endothelial cell function. So, in corroboration with the in vitro findings, we found that uh, there's an increased capillary, increased angiogenesis in the heart uh, in the circular FNDC 3B treated heart, so which is demonstrated by CD31 straining. I'm sorry, I'm already vaccinated. Uh, it's just some allergies. So. So next, uh, you know, uh, so with this, uh, we have understood that overexpression of this circular FNDC3B, uh, rescuing it uh, would enhance endothelial cell uh, function, you know, and also reduce cardiomyocyte apoptosis and also improving cardiac function. So I wanted to recap like what uh, we did so far. So we found that uh, this circular RNA was uh, down regulated or it, it, its expression levels you know went low uh, with the heart attacks so we are trying to increase it you know levels to see whether we can improve heart function so so we increase the levels by plasma mediated overexpression and also viral mediated overexpression in the animal models of heart attacks so when we when we increase the levels uh, in the mouse models of heart attack uh, we see an improvement in cardiac function uh, in these mouse models. So now we wanted to understand the mechanism. So um, we submitted, started this paper submitting to the cell, you know, one of the, you know, um, uh, very reputed journals and uh, uh, they came back and, uh, you know, uh, they asked to us to make a mouse model of this circular RNA. Then we published, uh, submitted this paper to Nature Medicine and uh, nature transferred it to nature com 
Fletcher Communications, and it is a reputed journal too. And uh, we had to work on this manuscript for uh, for an year actually to revise. So they had uh, uh, they had a lot of uh, you know questions uh, in their in a reviewer's mind because this is completely new, and uh, you know we are coming up with completely new therapy for heart disease. So they wanted to understand the mechanisms, you know. For the students, you know, who are interested, you know, to pursue their career in research, uh, you know, uh, uh, high impact journals always they, they look for uh, in vitro mechanisms, in vivo mechanisms, and uh, uh, and also in in vitro, uh, in vivo physiology data. It should be a complete story basically if you want to uh, really uh, put your uh, you know papers into uh, good journals. So. So here uh, we are trying to understand the mechanism. So, so we explored different mechanisms and we landed up on the, uh, an unknown mechanism. I, so I'll tell you in, in my subsequent slides. So here, uh, you know, since this cognate gene FNDC3B has a role in uh, PA3K AKT signaling, so we overexpressed this uh, circular RNA and looked at the PA3K AKT signaling pathway. And uh, and it we did not find any effect. You know, as you see this, there were no changes uh, when we overexpressed uh, this circular RNA uh, in the endothelial cells, and uh, PA3K AKT signaling was not uh, changed with the overexpression of this circular RNA. So this gave us an indication that this circular RNA is acting something you know beyond its cognate gene function. So next, as I mentioned, circular RNAs can act as microRNA sponges. So we looked at, you know, we did an in silico analysis and we found that this circular RNA has binding sites for five different microRNAs. So again, uh, you know, just a brief background about microRNAs. So just like circular RNAs, microRNAs are another type of non-coding RNAs. So we are trying to see whether these circular RNAs are interacting with the uh, small, uh, you know, microRNAs and uh, that's how they are mediating its function. So microRNAs, uh, you know, um, they are again small RNAs, and uh, they interact with the mRNA or protein, and it can degrade, uh, you know, translation. I mean, translation, and it can bind to mRNA to the three prime UTR region and, and uh, degrade the uh, mRNA transcripts as well. So basically, imagine uh, that when the microRNA levels are up your target gene uh, mRNA levels are down. So so we, what we are trying to understand is if circular FNDC3B acts as a molecular sponge for these microRNAs, so uh, that would hold it back. It would sequester those microRNAs and hold those microRNAs back from what they are supposed to do and inhibit its function. So we thought it would be a uh, you know, good uh, you know, uh, way of demonstrating this uh, circular FNDC3B, and uh, Nicholas Rogerski's group, uh, they have published in Nature that one of these circular RNAs, uh, you know, has 77 binding sites for a microRNA, which, which is uh, can, uh, which is plays an important role in cancers. So when they overexpress this uh, uh, circular RNAs, it interacts with that microRNA and inhibit it, and uh, and they have shown in cancer lines that they can in inhibit cancer cell proliferation. So, taking that as an example, we thought a circular FNDC3B might be interacting with these microRNAs and, and then holding them back and uh, inhibiting their activity. And probably that's how it is, uh, you know, improving cardiac function, uh, which we saw in our previous experiments. So, we first confirmed, you know, we uh, uh, transfected, you know, we generated a plasmid where we inserted this circular FNDC3B and uh, uh, in the loose phrase vector, and we overexpressed uh, each of these uh, microRNAs to see whether there's a physical interaction. And we found that uh, this uh, my, uh, this circular RNA binds to 298, 412, and 93, but not 72 and 6998. So of the five microRNAs I've shown in my previous slide, only three of them physically bind. Uh, you know, which is confirmed by this Lucifer's essay. So next, we wanted to see uh, whether uh, uh, there is an increased expression of these microRNAs in the mouse hearts post MI. So why we did this experiment? As you remember, that circular FNDC3B levels were 
down regulated or their expression levels went low uh, we we are seeing whether these micro rnas went up so we see a inverse correlation here when the circular RNA, uh, circular RNA levels were down as you see this red bars uh, you know this three micro rnas 93 412 and 298 were up regulated so our circular RNA levels were down and micro RNA levels were up so we thought it would make in you know, a perfect sense when we are when we are increasing its levels it will go bind to them and inhibit its activity that was the whole uh, idea so we generated uh, mutant, mutant plasmids you know we wanted to confirm uh, whether this interaction uh, has a functional relevance or it's just uh, you know a random thing so so what we did was, uh, as I mentioned, uh, this circular RNA has binding sites for these three micro RNA. So we mutated the binding sites actually. So for example, uh, this is for one micro RNA. So we mutated so that you know it cannot bind actually. You know if there's a mutation, this micro RNA cannot bind to this. So so like that we mutated we mutated all the three binding sites uh, in this uh, circular RNA. And we again overexpress them, and we confirm the overexpression by qPCR. And uh, and we had this uh, in vitro model system where uh, you know when we subject cardiomyocytes to stress, uh, there's an increased levels of this micro RNA 93, 412, and 298. And and in these conditions, when we are overexpressing uh, this wild type and mutant circular RNAs, when I say mutant, it is micro RNA mutant. So it uh, it has uh, their binding sites are mutated there. So when the binding sites are mutated, uh, you know we found that you know there was no effect. So this suggests that this circular RNA has binding sites, but they are not functional. So in this particular experiment, we subjected uh, cardiomyocytes to um, H2O2 hyper hydrogen peroxide stress and overexpress these two wild type and mutant. And overexpression of this wild type and mutant did not have, I mean, significantly downregulated both of them. So, so imagine if there was uh, this mutant, if it is acting as a micro RNA sponge, you know, we would not expect that this um, there's a downregulation or reduced apoptosis in the cardiomyocytes. So, this suggests that circular RNA uh, has binding sites for the micro RNA, but they're not functional. So, that was one more uh, you know interesting thing we found so again in the in the in the mouse hearts we injected the virus with the wild type and mutant and we found uh, you know uh, in both the cases in wild type and mutant both equally protected the heart uh, uh, cardiomyocytes going into apoptosis so this suggests that this circular rna has binding sites for these micro rnas but they're not functional so this is interesting. There are a lot of papers in the field uh, telling that the circular RNAs can act as micro RNA sponges, but uh, there's a word of caution there. You know, we have to be more cautious. Uh, you know, uh, while uh, uh, choosing this circular RNA micro RNA interaction uh, in terms of uh, binding sites, I think there's a stoichiometry there. So if you have more binding sites and uh, or your know, circular RNA is very well expressed. Um, so that it can actually interact and sequester microRNA. So in our case, it was only one binding site for e for each of these microRNAs. So we think it has to do with the stoichiometry. There were more microRNAs and less circular RNA molecules, and there was there were on, there was only one binding site for each microRNA. So that was the reason we think that it did not work out. So next, uh, you know, we explored. You know, we we are done with two mechanisms. We you know we need to perform the third you know uh, experiment to see whether it interacts with rna binding proteins so in the literature uh, we know that this circular rna is either act as micro rna sponges or rna binding protein sponges so while we were doing this uh, uh, mariam gorespi's group in nih they they made this database uh, and uh, we looked at our uh, circular rna sequence and it has binding sites for ego2 and fuse Fuse is RNA binding protein, and AGO2 is a uh, is is an important uh, mediator of the risk complex. It's a core component of the risk complex. So we wanted to understand whether it has a role in uh, you know whether it interacts with fuse. Fuse is RNA binding protein, and it is also you know uh, has been shown to be 
increased uh, in vast vascular tumor formation and uh, it also inhibits productivity uh, pro apoptotic activity of the cancer cells and there's no known uh, role of this uh, fuse in the cardiovascular physiology or pathology so so we uh, hypothesized uh, this circular RNA interacting with this fuse uh, you know uh, is mediating angiogenesis and cardiomyocytes survival so that was the hypothesis so we did a RNA uh, you know, binding protein immunoplasmation. So we over, I mean, we took naive, I mean, endothelial cells or cardiomyocytes and uh, used this IgG or fuse anti-antibody and ego to do to do an immunoplasmation. So what we are trying to understand is whether these RNAs uh, have any enrichment of this circular RNA. So we are trying to understand. Pulling down this uh, protein has an interaction with this circular RNA. So from the database, we found that this circular RNA interacts with ego2 uh, and uh, fuse. And we found that uh, you know when we pulled down this fuse uh, specifically, uh, there's a uh, very well uh, you know, uh, enrichment of this circular FNDC3B uh, with the fuse. So this, uh, you know, gave us a confidence that probably fuse is acting as, uh, you know, interacting with circular RNA, and that's how it is mediating its functions. So next, uh, you know, uh, we looked at the fuse levels and uh, overexpression of this circular fndc 3 b <coughs> Excuse me, I'm sorry. Uh, Circular RNA uh, significantly reduced fuse levels and increasing veg VEGF levels, as we see, as we saw in the previous experiments. So, so we we also confirmed it by either overexpression or underexpression of this fuse. And you know, I mean, again, this is a busy slide, but overexpression, uh, you know, reduced the VEGF levels and uh, Overexpression in the presence of circular FNDC3B blunted uh, VEGF levels. So this suggests that circular FNDC3B interacting with uh, fuse is regulating VEGF level. And we also found in the mouse hearts uh, that this circular RNA uh, AV circular FNDC3 therapy increased VEGF levels in the heart compared to the controls. This suggests that circular RNA levels uh, were upregulated after our AV treatment, and VEGF levels are going up, and that's how we are able to see. Improvement in cardiac function. This is a working model, as I mentioned. Uh, circular RNA, uh, circular FNDC3B levels were reduced uh, with the heart attack, and when we are rescuing its levels, uh, you know it is inter you know it is uh, interacting with fuse and uh, you know uh, increasing VEGF levels and uh, increasing cardiomyocyte survival and enhancing the angiogenesis, and that's how it is improving the function. And we, uh, this work wouldn't have been possible uh, without uh, my team and uh, my collaborators, um, and um, and funding from the American Heart Association. Uh, I'll be happy to take any questions. Uh, thank you, thank you all for your time. Thank you, sir, for your wonderful presentation. And now it's time for the queries. I request all the participants to find the chat box and to post your questions there. Hi, sir. Yeah. Uh, am I audible? Uh, OK, yeah, thank yeah. you for wonderful, uh, wonderful presentation. We had work. Uh, one of my questions is actually I, I, I may miss that FNDC3B is, is, is it a, the gene product? What is the gene product? Is it actually involved in the cardio? Yeah, uh, cardio instruction. Right. So, uh, so I mean, uh, this FNDC3B has multiple exons. Uh, uh, if it has to code for a protein, uh, uh, it needs all the exons. But the circles, uh, the circular RNA coming from this uh, uh, gene, they're coming from only a second and third exons. So, so yeah, they are the products of FNDC3B cognate gene. Yeah, but we did not find any changes with the cognate gene. Only the circle levels were 
reduced in this uh, particular system? Okay, so that means the protein is there. Not so protein levels were unchanged. Oh, okay. Yeah. So uh, do, do we have any evidence there or the mechanism of the down regulation of the specific circular RNA? What That's a great question, actually. So, as I mentioned, when we started this project, uh, there were no uh, knockdown strategies because this is completely uh, new RNA species, and we were learning new things each day during the time. Even now, uh, uh, knockdown strategies are not very well established. It also, when we try to knock down this particular uh, RNA, it also affects the cognate gene. So, it also affects the protein levels, which uh, would not make much sense. So, yeah, that's a great question. We haven't looked into that um, aspect because of the technical limitations. We would have allowed to do that, but uh, we, we we didn't do that actually. Okay, sir. One more. What is actually the fused protein? Yeah. It is RNA binding protein, that's all, or it's specific role? So, uh, so when we looked at this database uh, developed by this, uh, you know, NIA, National List of Aging, uh, by this Mariam Garo Space Group, so they uh, did, uh, you know, uh, they generated this site where we can see what proteins these circular RNAs interact with. So that's when we found that this circular RNA interacts with the fused protein, and um, and that's how actually uh, and fused is RNA binding protein. It 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 is regulating VEGF levels. As you know, RNA binding protein stabilizes RNA or destabilizes mRNA. So in this case, uh, it appears that fused is regulating VEGF levels because when we when we uh, knock down this fused, we see. Uh, more expression of VEGF when we overexpress this, there's a less expression of VEGF. So I think there's a, a direct uh, regulation there. Okay, thank you, sir. Yeah, if anybody has any other questions, you know, if you Feel free to email me. I can share my email with uh, Dr. Mohan. Do we have any other questions? The participants can unmute and ask directly. Excuse sure. me, sir. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Can yeah. you hear me? Uh, yeah. So, uh, sir, um, is there any relationship between this heredity and the, the circular RNA? Which one? I'm sorry. Uh, the circular RNA and heredity, because uh, as we know that uh, uh, one of the reason for this uh, uh, heart attack is uh, uh, heart attack has some background uh, on heredity. Awesome. My question okay. is, is there, uh, is there so, any relation between the circular RNA and the hereditary factors? Okay, awesome. That's a great question, actually. So I don't think there's any um, literature out there uh, about this. But uh, okay, in one of our projects, actually, we are looking into the variants. For example, um, we have a target which is involved in heart attacks, and and there are no mutations in these uh, uh, target in the humans. So we are correlating. For example, um, in the human disease, uh, a mutation is there, and it causes. Uh, in a cardiac hypertrophy. For example, there's um, uh, myocyte uh, uh, binding heavy chain uh, B2. So there is one protein actually. So mutation in this particular protein is involved in ca uh, cardiac hypertrophy. So, so circular RNA coming from that particular uh, region uh, and there is a possibility that it could be linked to heredity, and um, since these are stable molecules, uh, I, you know, they could be good biomarkers as well. So imagine there's a mutation, and uh, that mutation is able to carry over in the circular RNAs. 
so we can detect them in the plasma and we can tell that hey this guy uh, is predicted to have or will have this disease in the future so that could that is possible yes okay sir so uh, i think the mutation is actually occur in the uh, dna or rna sequence actually dna Oh, okay, 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 sir. Yeah. Thank you, thank you, sir. Yeah. Any other questions? I think somebody is typing. Good question. Actually, uh, again, uh, this is all uh, you know. Uh, it's an emerging field, and you know we are still learning new things. We are actually uh, looking into the role of uh, high-fat diet. Into um, we know that high-fat diet causes diabetes, uh, and uh, and also we know that diabetes leads to heart failure. So we are trying to link. Uh, you know, uh, we are not actually exactly questioning. Uh, whether diet has any effect, I'm sure there will be an effect because there's a lot of uh, changes that happens with the uh, with the diet. So, so we are asking a different question. So, what are the changes, uh, you know, after uh, uh, an individual developing diabetes? So, we subject the animals to high fat diet, and you know, we uh, high fat diet. For, you know, if you treat the animals with high fat diet for six months, they develop diabetes. So our question is whether uh, diabetes induces, uh, you know, cardiac dysfunction because of the dysregulation of this circular RNA. So, so de diet definitely, uh, you know, differentially, you know, regulates uh, circular RNA expression. That is possible. Yeah. Uh, oh, sir, one more question. Yeah, the microRNAs uh, micro you studied or looked into are microRNAs 298, 93, and 4 12. Yeah. Whether they have any inhibitory role on vegetarian RNA or vegetarian? Sorry, whether they have? Any inhibitory role over vegetarian protein or mRNA? So, so, uh, I don't think so because you know uh, in our data at least uh, as I showed you that when we use this mutant plasmids uh, we did not find any effect so so when I'm saying mutant plasmids we we mutated specifically those three micro binding sites 93 298 and 412 uh, when we mutated them uh, if the microRNA levels are up in the you know in the system, they are supposed to sequester, right? So when we mutated them, we did not find any effect. So uh, we don't think that uh, this particular circular RNA act as microRNA sponges. But uh, irrespective of the circular RNA, microRNA can regulate those uh, you know uh, VEGF levels. But that was not our question and. Uh, they they could regulate at one of but at least circular reference preview does not regulate um, uh, wedge levels through microRNAs. Okay, sir. thank you. Yeah. It's like a result of evolution, the circular RNAs. So the result of evolution. Yeah, because uh, I have read few papers uh, in certain plant species also report the presence of these circular RNAs, but I'm not sure about that. That's why I was. No, just... I mean uh, you, you're correct actually. So, uh, so any any organism which has uh, uh, 
which which has you know dna i, I think they can form circles so interestingly uh, this uh, group from yale uh, they found you know they work on viral circular rnas so so they wanted to see for example uh, how this virus induces inflammation you know uh, in the in a cell type so they found out a mechanism that you know uh, this circular rna is coming from the virus so how how does the body differentiate uh, foreign you know from self so so they did you know it's a molecular cell paper they published uh, a couple of years ago they showed that this circles circular rna coming from the virus are naked when i'm saying naked generally rnas are structured they have some other other stuff binding to them but they have shown that this this circular rna coming from the virus do not have any rna binding proteins or micro rnas on them so keeping them you know without interacting with any other uh, uh, rnas or proteins so they are they are considered as a foreign molecules by the host system and they you know and the system starts you know fighting against that particular circular rnas coming from the virus so yeah all the organisms uh, uh, have circles and uh, um and they they have a regulatory role yes thank you yeah you're welcome Do we have any more questions? Yeah, if any of you are hesitant to ask, feel free to email me. You know, I'll be happy to respond. Okay, I think there are no more questions to be asked. And thank you, sir, for answering the questions for the participants. And I request the participants to find the feedback form provided in the chat box and to fill the form as well. And now I welcome Ms. Jyoti S. Nair, student representative, to deliver the word of thanks. Jyoti, please. Department of I sincerely thank you for the shape of the found time to be able to a deep insight on the role of circular RNAs in cardiovascular health and diseases. The talk was really informative and interesting. Thank you, sir, for making this section informative and meaningful. Next, I would like to thank all the participants. For your collaboration, the department, faculties, organizing committee, and IQEC have given enormous support to make this program successful. Once again, thank you all for your cooperation. Thank you.